At the beginning of the month, I started this series on being rich, and we started out by talking about money and how money doesn't really make us happy. It never will make us happy. And we talked about the journey of being rich. It really begins with our relationship with our Savior, Jesus. And then what we do with Jesus in that time, meaning if we are growing in our faith, if we're praying, if we're reading scripture, if we're worshiping, if we're surrounding ourselves with others who share the value and the relationship we have with Jesus, then God is indeed going to bless us with a spiritual richness that money could never buy. Last week, we talked about to add to our faith a strong family, a loving family, a gracious family, a family that loves us, cares for us, nurtures our faith, helps us grow, and then that will make us also rich. Today we're going to talk about friends, the value of friendship. Now, some time ago, I forget how long ago, I was umpiring baseball, and one of the gentlemen that kind of mentored me in the very beginning, he approached me, and this is what he said. Sam, he knew I was a pastor. He knew about my spiritual journey. His words to me was this. When you die, who are going to be, who, are, who will your six be? I'm thinking, what, what? Who will my six be? I didn't know what he was talking about, my six. Well, he went and explained it. Who are going to be the six men who carry your body to the gravesite? I went, oh, well, that's weird, Randy. His name is Randy. Randy actually is, well, I say is. He was, he was younger than me. He died of COVID about three months ago. Now, he would have never thought that, but I've thought about that, and I've thought about that question that he asked me since then. And I, asked, I answered him at that time, and I said, I don't have a six. I don't know who my six would be. Now, I'm sure Rhonda could find six, and she, she would, you know, say, y'all carry him out, and, you know, that would be it. But when you think about that idea, there are very few people that really think about those things. Because what Amanda sang about earlier is so very true. You know, money's not going to buy us happiness, but our faith will give us something we could never buy. Our family adds to that in ways we could never fully understand either. And the people we call our friends pour even more into our lives, and that is indeed a special blessing. I mean, Angie, you've got friends here from Canada, I believe. Well, you, would, you and Becky, and, you know, that's an amazing friendship. In my hospice work a few months ago, I'd been visiting this one particular family for six months or better. And the wife was the patient, late 60s, with dementia. I never knew her prior to the disease. And he and I would talk every time I visited, and he talked about his friends. Now, his mom is still alive, and she lives right next door to him. He has other family, he has children, he has grandchildren. He talked about his family, but he also talked about his friends. He talked about how they, they, the friendship group, had been friends since middle school. They all lived in the Atlanta area, and they then moved out of the Atlanta area to other parts of Metro Atlanta, and they would get together three to four times a year and plan these trips to the beach, to the mountains, and and they all rented a house together and how much fun it was. I never really understood the depth of how their friendship helped them until the day of her funeral. I did the funeral, and he sat up w with me because he wanted to say something about his, his wife and their relationship. And several of his friends got up and shared some things about her as well. And as, as I listened to all of the things that they talked about, from faith to family to friendship, to be honest with you, that funeral was the inspiration for this whole series. Because as I sat there and observed and as I listened, I understood a little more about being rich has a lot more to do with the things we think it does. Because the level of friendship that they had 
is something so many of us don't have. We truly need other people to do life with us. We need that, and it's important. And so we have to also remember this. We need to choose our friends very carefully. Not everybody's going to make you a good friend to add into your life. They actually take away from you. In fact, 1 Corinthians 15 says this, Don't be deceived. Bad company corrupts good character. So we have to choose our friends very carefully. So what does the Bible say about friendship? It actually says a lot about friendship. So I'm going to read this passage from Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 7 through 12. And this is how it reads. Solomon, who penned these words as God led him, wrote, Again, I saw futility under the sun. Now, futility meaning meaningless, worthless. He said, I saw something that didn't really amount to a hill of beans. Verse 8. There is a person without a companion, even without a son or brother, and though there is no end to all his struggles, his eyes are still not content with riches. So who am I struggling for, he asked, and depriving myself from good? This too is futile futile and a miserable task. You see how Solomon, in observing the people around him, he saw a man who had no family, no friends, and yet he was working hard to add to his bank account. And the man concluded, this is just worthless, meaningless. I'm I'm not happy. I'm miserable. So then Solomon writes in verse 9, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their efforts. For if either falls, his companion can lift him up. But pity the one who falls without another to lift him up. Also, if two lie down together, they can keep warm. warm, But how can one person alone keep warm? And if someone overpowers one person, two can resist him. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. So as we hear these words, we need to remember As we go through our days, money will not buy us happiness. It will not buy us contentment. It will not satisfy our needs. We need, first and foremost, a faith in Christ that will get us through the darkest of days, a family that has nurtured, loves us still, and encourages us, and we need some good friends, some very good friends, people that have got our back. Solomon noticed some things about Friendship, And I'm going to read some other verses in a moment, but think about this in verse number 10. That when you've got someone who is your friend, they actually help you become a little more successful. You know, friends that are good friends are going to be honest with you. They'll, they'll tell you the truth, sometimes brutal truth. I mean, and I know that to be true. I've had some people in my life tell me, you don't need to do that. Or you should never do that again. And then I've had them say, you need to do that again, and you need to develop that before. And so we need to remember that a good friend is going to help us be more successful in life. They will push us. They will prod us. They will motivate us. They'll listen to us. They'll encourage us. Not only that, but he says a good friend will lift you up. Angie, you alluded to that this morning. You didn't allude to it. You said it. You know, when you are struggling with something, when you have someone to walk alongside you who is a friend, not only do they listen to you, not only do they spur you and motivate you to do a little better, but they lift you up when you are really down and out. They're not going to beat you up. They literally listen. And they're going to hear you. And they, they know you. And they're going to be there with you when the days are dark. And when it looks a little hopeless, they'll be there with you to lift you back up. And then that next verse, warmth. Um, this morning, my, I've, I've reached the age of my life where my, my hands get really cold. Now, my feet get cold too. Now, thankfully, I have a, a wife who is also my best friend who will help warm up my feet. I'm never going to, to my knowledge, I hope I never have to ask any of you, could you please warm my feet up? I don't want you looking at my feet or touching my feet, but when it comes to my wife, I'm like, it's fair game. Warm them babies up. 
But this morning, my hands are cold. She noticed, she grabbed my hand. We're holding hands, not because we love, love each other. We do love each other, but she said, your hands are cold. You need to warm them up. And so she warmed them up. And the idea is this, when you've got a good friend, not only do they help you physically, but they give you emotional warmth as well. Sometimes we just need that emotional connection with another person to say, you know what, I love you and I care for you. Now, now for guys, all right, if I'm really, really, let's just say that there was an ice storm and we're trapped on the side of the road and there's another guy in the car with me, I guess if, I mean, I'm on, I guess we'll, you know, if we got to sleep close or kind of get, I mean, I'll do it, but I'm like, that's it, all right? We don't get that. I mean, I'm this, all right, enough of that. I'm digging a deep hole. I just need to move on. That, I almost wanted to skip this verse for this reason because it was just weird to me. But there's truth to it. If it's cold, you, you, another person will help keep you warm. But I want you to think, too, about we sometimes are living in a very cold world. Not cold physically, but a cold emotionally world. You know, when you turn on the news and you see all of the, the hatred and the strife that's going on, it's as if people's hearts have just grown cold. But when you've got a good friend or good friends, there, in fact, when my brother that, that I did the funeral for his wife, when he talked about his friendships, the people that he had known since middle school, and they had stayed together, there was a smile on his face. And, and, he, and you could see in his eyes the glee, the, the, just the warmth that those relationships brought into his life. And then Solomon talks about also having good friends gives you strength. It helps you stand against the troubles of this world. You know, it's hard to stand alone in this world. We can't face all that we struggle with in our own power. We just don't have it. Angie is a testimony to how her friends helped her get through the struggle. She needed friendships or friends to help her get through it. Her family, your family was important in that, Angie. But your family alone wasn't as powerful as your friends in that mix as well. And that is why it is so vitally important for us to have a strong family, faith, and friends to help us through the darkest days of our life. Now, that's Ecclesiastes. I want to share about three other scriptures with you. Last week, by the way, this is just a little pause, a little, a little quick rabbit to chase. After the message last week and I got home and I plugged the, the flash drive into the computer and looked, it was 46 minutes long. I had no idea I was up here that long. I, I, I'm not going to keep you that long today, I promise. So with that said, first one I want to mention to you, this is another reason families matter, is because we need encouragement. We live in a discouraging world, don't we? This is a very discouraging world. Ecclesiastes talked about a little bit of this, but 1 Thessalonians 5.11 reads this way, Encourage each other and build each other up. If you want to write it down, it's 1 Thessalonians 5, and I don't have enough fingers, 11. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 we need to remember as good friends, not only do we need to do the other things I just mentioned, but we also need to encourage each other. We do live in a discouraging world. There is so much unhappiness. There is so much criticism. There is so much frustration, so much anger. I, I, on the news last week, somebody got killed over an argument over a bowling ball. Now, I mean, Seriously? What is wrong with our world? And not just that, but people, if you're in the wrong lane going a little too slow, people used to flash their lights behind you. Now they just shoot at you. We live in a discouraging world. We need friends to encourage us in the midst of all of the discouragement. We need somebody that, that will say, look, you can do this. I will help you do this. You know, a lot of us have talked about through the years losing weight or, or exercising. 
that usually happens eh, maybe late December, early January, you know, when we've looked at the scales and we've eaten all of the cake, the pies and the chocolate and so forth. And then we go, oh, I need to lose a little weight and get healthy. And then we think I'll, I'll, ex-. and then of course, February comes and we'll think, you know, this Valentine's day and we're eating more chocolate. So we need some friends to encourage us. We also need friends to give us honest advice. Proverbs chapter 27, verse number nine says this, oil and perfume make the heart glad. Notice the latter part, and a person's advice is sweet to his friend. It's encouraging. It's honest. We need someone in our life who will give us honesty. I mean, to be really honest with us. So many of us are not good friends because we flatter people the wrong way. Now, Amanda sang, and she said she had a gift, and she wasn't lying. She can sing. I've had people tell me I can sing, and, and, and I'm not standing up here singing anytime soon yet. Yet. I, I, I understand. I remember watching American Idol, the, you know, the, the auditions in the early days. I watched it because, not because I wanted to hear good singers, but I wanted to hear bad singers. I'm a bad person. I wanted to hear the bad singers get ripped. And, and yet in my warped little way at that time of my life, I wanted to hear them and go, I'm glad I'm not doing that, making a fool out of myself. And I remember so many of these people saying this. My mama told me I could sing. My best friend told me I was an amazing singer. Almost all of those people, after they were told, N -n no way absolutely no way they were told you're not a good singer somebody in their life told them they were an amazing singer they were lied to now maybe they could become a good singer i don't know but a good friend is honest with us have there ever been those moments in your life when you were thinking about doing fill in the blank just you're going to do this you thought it was a great idea, and one of your best friends said to you, no, and you didn't listen, <laughs> and you did it, and then you later, and you maybe got mad at your friend because you said, in, out loud or not, you don't support me or you don't really care. Sometimes we don't want to know honest truth, but a good friend's going to tell us the truth. And that's why Proverbs 27, 9 says that a friend's advice is sweet. It may not be sweet at the moment, but it actually keeps us out of some trouble. We need those people in our life. Proverbs 27, 17 says this, As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. A good friend will help sharpen us. We don't use pencils much anymore, do we? Very few people write anymore. I mean, some of you are writing now, and it's great to see you writing. But a lot of us don't use pencils anymore. School teachers, if you were teachers, you know, years ago, how many of you, well, let me just say, how many of you remember the pencil sharpener in the classroom? I know I do. The good old pencil sharpener. You would take your pencil and go to the front of the classroom, stick it in, and, and if you were an obnoxious kid, you would stay there and sharpen it until it went from this to this. And you, you wanted a sharp pencil because a sharp pencil wrote better than one that was dull. So here's what I want you to think about. We all have things in our life that we need to sharpen, that we need to hone that we need to improve. Many of us like sports. We love to watch baseball or football or basketball or whatever the case may be. And, and we watch high school. We watch even, you know, amateur, like kids playing on a field. And then we watch all the way to pro. And when we watch little kids play, we... We think it's cute and it's fun and it's exciting. And then we look at our little Johnny and we think he's going to make it big. 
And then everybody else around Johnny says, no, Johnny's not going to make it big. Johnny's just out there having fun. Do you see him playing in the dirt? Did you see Johnny miss the ball? I mean, you know, and, and maybe Johnny will make it big. Who knows? But even when they get to the pro level, they still practice. And they still have something called coaches. And why do they have coaches and why do they practice? So they can get even better at their craft. The point is this, none of us ever truly arrive. There's still things that I can learn, so many things in my life that I need to, to sharpen. And, and so a good friend will help you get better at your craft, will help you get better at being a husband, or help you get better at being a wife, or help you get better at being a parent, or help you get better at fill in the blank. Good friends sharpen us, and we need those persons in our life. Somebody to push us. Somebody to be a little sandpaper every now and then. To smooth out the rough edges around us. None of us really enjoys that, do we? We just want to surround ourselves with yes people and people who will just pat us on the back and tell us how amazing we are. But good friends are not only there to do all of those wonderful things, but they're to push us, to sharpen us, to give us advice, to encourage us. But a good friend is also there to pray for us. Job talked about this in Job 20, I mean, Job 16, verse 20 and 21. Many of you know the story of Job. Job was minding his own business, doing his thing. When Satan went up to heaven, makes me think of the song, you know, the devil went down to Georgia looking for a soul to steal. Anyway, I, I had my moment. <laughs> Satan went to heaven and had a conversation with God and basically said, I can make Job, your servant, curse you. And God said, oh, not Job, not Job. Job will never curse me. And the devil said, I bet I can make him. God said, go ahead and try. You can do whatever you want to him except take his, take his life. I often thought that was kind of interesting because if he's dead, how can he curse God? So basically, Satan was given free reign by God to do whatever he wanted to do to make Job's life miserable. And Satan orchestrated the death of all of his children, really all of his possessions, income, he turned his friends against him. At this later, there's three best friends. And even his wife became a real true nagger. And, and Job never cursed God. He struggled. But see, somewhere in the midst of all that, as bad as Job's friends were to him, this is what Job said about his friends. My intercessor is my friend. As my eyes pour out tears to God. On behalf of a man, he pleads with God as one pleads for a friend. Even as bad as Job's friends were, and telling him, just curse God and die, they still prayed for him. We need friends who will pray for us. We need friends who will say, I don't really understand what you're going through. I'm sorry you're going through this. I wished you weren't going through it. But I will pray for you. I will pray for your situation. I will, I will lift you up before God. And then they pray out loud in front of you. They hold your hand. They put their hand on your shoulder. And they shed tears along with you. Their heart breaks for you. And they ask God to do what only He can do. We need friends like that. You see, friends, and I look... I just scratched the surface of all of the scriptures about friends. If you, if you do a Google search, just type in the word friends Bible, and the list is long. I could spend three days sharing all of the scriptures with you, but you would leave. And I understand because you'll get hungry. Just know this, 
Money will never buy us what we really desire. But when we understand, God, I want to serve you, and I want to be one of your children, and I am praying for a family that will pour into my life and that I will pour into their life, and God, I want you to give me friends to also pour into my life and help me walk this journey of life, then God, I will truly be rich this side of heaven. See, my prayer is that you'll have those kinds of people who are good friends, the right friends, the best friends to help you because we all need those kind of people.